Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good evening, everyone. It is Friday, July the 2nd, 2021. It is currently 5.50 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from Victory Baptist Church, located right here in the middle of nowhere, Texas. And I hope, I hope that you will listen to everything I'm going to say carefully. There's there's a part of me. I was here in the sanctuary of the church, and I was just... I was just kind of walking back and forth thinking about, okay, do, a, do I turn the microphone on and go live and do another live broadcast or do I just pack everything up and go home? I mean, it, it is 4th of July weekend. I don't know how many people will even be listening right now. So I, I've, done, I've done a few things. Maybe I'll go home, but I just, I felt this like weight, this burden. And I, I felt that I, I'm not gonna be able to rest I'd be happy until I turn on this microphone and just share with you what what's weighing me down, all right? This, this burden. I feel like I have a burden and I need to share it. And I understand that when I share this burden, it's not going to be your burden because you probably will think I'm crazy. You, In fact, you may disagree with everything that I'm going to say. And I understand it's going to come at this from a very, very, very different perspective but I just ask that you at least consider. And, and I'm not trying to come at this like I'm a jerk or I'm trying to be mean or I'm trying to be condescending. I, I, I'm coming at this really with almost a pleading, a begging. I'm pleading with every Christian and with every church and the sound of my voice in the United States of America. I don't know how this will be applicable to people in other countries, but at least you can, for those listening in other countries, you can at least kind of get some insight to American Christianity around the 4th of July. But something happens in many churches on the 4th of July that I find to be absolutely abhorrent, blasphemous, ungodly, It's definitely not scriptural. And basically, I believe it becomes a form of idolatry. And it is the patriotism that walks through the front door of many churches, especially, especially in a year when the 4th of July, on a year where the 4th of July falls on a Sunday. This year in the United States of America, 4th of July will happen on on a Sunday, on the Lord's Day, and it will be the Lord's Day, but I think the Lord is going to have some stiff competition this year because it's going to be more not a and now we're gonna we're gonna throw the Lord into the conversation, but it's gonna be about <laughs> The red, white, and blue. It's going to be about America. It's going to be about the stars and stripes. It's going to be about songs sung in the church that that are patriotic, about country, about America, the greatness of America, that and all of the different things about America, America. The, the sanctuaries and many churches will be filled with American flags, patriotic songs. It may be decorated in you know, red, white, and blue, and 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 in many churches. Guess what? To celebrate the Fourth of July for many churches, guess what will happen? Especially Sunday night. Guess what will happen? They will not have a Sunday evening service. They will cancel the preaching of God's word for the Fourth of July celebration, so that people can have food. Pop, you know, uh, celebrate with fireworks, fun, food, celebration. And so immediately that begins to call into question, what, what is going on? What is going on? I believe that this is a, it, it's, it's, it happens a lot and it, it trouble, it grieves me so much. And I, look, some of you, I know you may not have a lot of good churches in your area, but I, I don't even know what to tell you to do. If you go to church Sunday and it's all like, you know, Raw, 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 you know, proud to be an American. America, 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 America. You know, the red, white, and blue, the Statue of Liberty, apple pie, you know, patriotism, patriotism, patriotism. Um, I, I, I would be so grieved because it, I would, I would be looking to me at what I would be witnessing 
if that was happening is I'd be witnessing the church engaging in full-blown idolatry. Now, I know they're going to say, no, 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 no. We're, we're worshiping God for what he's done in America. But, but you watch, it's going to be very hard at times to distinguish. Are we really worshiping God? Or are we worshiping the country? Are we truly celebrating God? Are we, are we only celebrating God in, as the one who gave us the country, but it's really about the country? What is the focus really, really on? Is the focus on Christ and him crucified? Is the focus on his word? Or is the focus on celebrating America on the 4th of July. Now, you watch. If there's supposed to be a preaching service on Sunday night, gets c- c- cut because now we're going to let people go celebrate. I guarantee you churches around here will cancel their services. And they're not canceling their services because there's people, out, you know. Now, maybe they have to cancel the services. And I, I do understand this as a small church. You, you All of a sudden, you get that phone call. Hey, we're going out of town. We're going to be gone. We're going to be gone. We're going to be gone. And then you have to, you know, well, no evening service tonight because, well, there's not going to be anybody here. I definitely understand that. I definitely understand that. I'm talking churches where that's not the issue. They're purposely canceling so people can go celebrate the 4th of July. That is, would you not agree, I I think problematic. Now, maybe you don't think it's problematic. I think it does. The, the, The reason I've been having these thoughts is, where did I find, where did I see this? Give me one second. Where did I see it? Um, It was in the Christian Post. Go to the Christian Post. Yeah, here it is. Christian Post. First Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas. Not far from me, right? A couple hours away. First Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, holds Freedom Sunday to celebrate America's Christian foundation. Pastor Robert Jeffress, prominent Texas megachurch, First Baptist uh, Dallas, held its annual Freedom Sunday to celebrate National Heritage a week ahead of Independence Day. The observance, controversial for its focus on American patriotism, featured a 200-voice choir. Now, I'm looking at the stage here. Behind them, uh, it's uh, on the big screen, I see the stars, obviously, for the American flag. And then I see three uh, military members who are saluting. I'm assuming they're saluting. Maybe they're playing the national anthem here. I, I, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, they're saluting. Behind them, there are sparkles going off, like fireworks going off inside the sanctuary. You know, this sounds like what church is supposed to be. And of course, over to the left, there's the American flag prominent in the shot. I I have a hard time with all of it. I have a hard time. Where now now this I know this gets to regulative versus normative principle. I understand this. Some people and this is the idea if you don't know what regulative and normative principle is, regulative principle is where the church is the, the church's worship is regulated to what is clearly given in scripture. That's what all the church can do. What is clearly outlined in scripture. It cannot do anything else, can't add anything else. It's regulated. The normative principle is the church can do anything it wants as long as it's not it's not specifically prohibited or forbidden in scripture. So the normative principle, you have far more freedom than the regulative principle. Well, I guess if you're a normative principle person, well, I guess then you probably have no problem with the church doing this. But even as a normative principle person, where would you find anything in the New Testament that talks about having a church service where you're celebrating a country? where you're celebrating your country, you're, you, you have the flag and you're singing patriotic songs. That to me is utterly incompatible. That is placing something in competition with God. Now, I know again the argument, like, no, 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 we're worshiping God. We're worshiping God. We're worshiping God. But it, it, I'm sorry. It, it, it's, it's, it's a mixture. It's, it's problematic. Now, you know the scripture. I mean, I, I, I'm not going to give you here anything that's, that's revolution, you know, that's, you know, some kind of revelation here. You, you already know this. Uh, Exodus chapter 20, I mean, it's very basic, very simple. And God spake all these words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt and out of the house of bondage. Thou shall have no other God before me. God does not tolerate rivals. He does not tolerate it. 
He's the one who brought us freedom. Now, I've got no problem celebrating God who brought me freedom. But you know, the freedom that we should be celebrating is not the freedom of the country. We should be celebrating the freedom found in Jesus Christ, the freedom from death. Death, where is thy victory? It's no more. Death is now a mere shadow. Victory. Are, are, are. So he's, he's found victory over death. He's given me freedom from death. Yes, I will physically die, but it's not the end. I will have eternal life. So in a sense, he has given me freedom from death freedom ultimately from the grave because I will be resurrected. I will experience a resurrection. Freedom from the penalty of sin. Uh, uh, I am free from the pen- penalty of sin because it's all been given to Jesus Christ. There is true freedom fr- found in Christ. True freedom from spiritual issues that I have been set free from, from, from death, from sin. I have been set free. That is what we must celebrate. Now, yes, am I grateful that I live in a country, right? And and please don't, okay. I know we always have new listeners. I know you're going to get ticked off. You're going to say, you don't love your country and and, 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 and oh, look, just make sure we get this out of the way. 19 years active duty in the United States military. Then something goes horribly wrong. My military uh, career goes to an end uh, because I almost die and I won't go through all the details. All right. Then I, I spent another two, two plus years um, as a civilian contractor. And then it all, finally, it's all said and done. And now I'm considered 100% disabled uh, by the VA. All right. I'm not going to go through the whole story. But the point is, I served my country. I wore the uniform. I saluted the flag. I did what I, I was honor, honorable discharged. I got medals in the military, all the different. I'm not going to go through everything I did because that's just useless and pointless. The point, I, I hate even bringing it up, but if I don't bring it up, somebody's like, you never, people, people sacrifice for this country. And you don't, just slow down, slow down before you start making accusations. I am grateful for the freedoms I have in this country. I am very grateful. And I thank God for those freedoms. But the church is not about America. The church is about the Lord Jesus Christ. The church is not the bride of America. It's the bride of Christ. We are seek to please him. We are, we are to seek to praise him. The church is a place where we come to worship God, and it's not about patriotism and about a certain country. It's not. Now, I, I'm thankful that I, I live in a country where I have freedom. That, that's, that's where God put me here. There are other, but, but guess what? When someone walks into my church and and I know I'm in the middle of a a church in the middle of nowhere, Texas, so it's not going to happen. But if someone was to walk through the door from a different country, I don't want them to learn about America and hear about America. I want them to hear about the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't want them to see my allegiance to a flag. I want them to see my allegiance to the one who hung on a cross. I, I, and that's why in my church, I know, I know people disagree. I don't, there's not never going to be an American flag inside this church. There's never going to be an American flag on this property. I'm not going to have a flagpole anywhere because we want a cross. There's a cross on the wall. That's what we're about. I, I don't do all the patriotic thing. I don't. Now, I love the country and I got no problem. When church is over, go celebrate. I got no problem putting uh, the American flag in your yard. I got no problem putting the American flag on your house. I I have no problem you playing all the patriotic songs you want in your house. I have no problem you're wearing a shirt saying, God bless America. That's fine. You can, you can go raw, raw, raw America. You can play, you know, God, uh, proud to be an American by Lee Green, Lee Greenwood, uh, for the rest of your life or whatever other patriotic song you want. I got no problem with any of that. I'm not saying that that's a sin, but bringing it into the church. It's not the church's job. It's not the church's mission. We are to preach Christ and him crucified. We are to teach the word of God. We are to, to expound scripture. And there's not, there's no, there's no pro-American verse in here, right? It's not. So I, I just think we have to be very careful. The things I guess I, I I was just writing down a couple of things I was thinking of. First thing, we just have to be careful of mixing. We don't want to mix and somehow create some weird Christian patriotic, almost a Christian nationalism. I know it's a buzzword, but we don't want to mix our patriotism with our Christianity so that we ultimately, ultimately what gets destroyed is Christianity. 
When you start mixing, when you start bringing things into Christianity that are not Christianity, you ultimately destroy Christianity and turn it into something it isn't. Be careful of mixing patriotism and 4th of July and whatever else nonsense gets brought into the church. Be careful of that. Second, be very careful that you stop that. Be very careful if you see your church kind of making the priority country politics and not Christ. And it can be subtle, but when it becomes more about politics and party and political party and political winning and political gains and political fighting, that's dangerous. And then be very careful for the canceling. Now, I know it's symbolic, but I'm telling you, if your church cancels the evening service for a 4th of July celebration, you know what they just showed you the priority is? Not Christ. They're canceling. I'm just telling you to be extremely careful of what's going to happen on Sunday in your church. I don't know what's going to happen. You know, you feel free to tell me. Be respectful, all right? Now, I'm not saying get up and walk out. Now, I mean, I mean, I guess there's a line that could be crossed that I would get up and walk out. I guess there there's a line that could be crossed. But if you do get out and walk walk out and make a, you know, put it this way. If you do get up and walk out, if, if something got really that bad, you have to ask yourself, are you getting up and walking out because you're really bothered? Or are you getting up and walking out because you're trying to make a scene and it becomes about you? That's problematic. Sometimes you may want to just, what you could probably do instead of getting up and walking out, because I'm not a fan of that, is sit and take it all in. Take it all in, right? Notes, take it all in, pay attention to everything that's going on. And the more it bothers you, and then you can contact the pastor, not in front of people, in a very respectful way and say, look, I don't know what happened on Sunday, but I cannot be a part of a church that basically committed idolatry and elevated basically the country above Christ. I can't tolerate that. Can't, won't, won't tolerate that, tolerate that. And just, uh, and then just tell them that you have to move on. And I, I would hate for that to happen, but tell them that you have to move on. Just, just, you, you, you can't, you can't do that. So I would, I would tell you not to walk out, no matter how bad it gets, no matter how bad it gets, so that you can witness it, so that when you speak, you speak as someone who watched the whole thing. Be respectful. Don't cause division. If you leave, leave quietly. Don't try to pull other people out. It's not your job. You leave quietly. If someone asks you, you can just say, well, you saw Sunday service. I have a problem with it, and I'm not I'm not here to try to badmouth the church or try to hurt the church. But you may have to go. I mean, I, I can't. I mean, there's just, there comes a line where there's too much is too much. But if it, if it becomes that bad, I'm sorry. I don't know how bad it's going to be. I, I don't know. I, I know that some churches go full-blown crazy with it. Some churches maybe are more in the middle. Some are probably very extreme to the other side, and we're probably in the minority. I'm, I'm too extreme to the other side. When I come to church Sunday, I'm not going to mention the 4th of July. I'm not mentioning it. Not at all. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stand up and preach. We're going to uh, work, continue through the Niagara Creed, and we're going to uh, go back to Romans 8. That's what we're going to do. And I, it, it's not going to be patriotic. I'm not going to be wearing a uh, an American flag tie. I'm not. We're not going to be. Uh, we're not going to. We're not going to do anything like that. I'm not going to have any uh, patriotic decorations inside the church. Uh, nothing like that in any way, shape, or form. It's just going to be church because it's church, and we're, we're going to worship God. Now you say, well, what if the sermon has some patriotic themes? Again, what, 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 what's what's what, what's going on here? Oh, wow. Wow. Someone just messaged me. I won't give his name because I wouldn't want it to get back to his church, but he just said that the Lee Greenwood song, God uh, Proud to be an American, has been sung in their church before. Wow. I, I have I have a long history with that song. Uh, when... Uh, we were being deployed for Desert Storm. <laughs> oh, man, it was horrible. We were being deployed for Desert Storm, and there was some kind of massive delay with the plane, and then the plane ended up breaking down over New York City, and oh, it was a, it was a big mess. I won't go through that whole long story, but where in, wherever we, because everybody was all patriotic because, you know, we were going to 
go go fight Iraq and, and okay and Saddam Hussein and all, okay all this stuff. Well, whenever we were placed in these situations where we were delayed, wherever we were, for some reason, just kept blaring over and over and over and over and over and over again. Proud to be an American by Lee Greenwood. I, I probably heard it between the time we took off and where I ultimately ended up. I think I'd heard the song like 9,000 times. I could not take it anymore. I was about, I was about to, I was about to, to, to just give up my citizenship and take off the uniform and go join another army because I could not handle it anymore. I'm like, they, they were like trying to brainwash us with the song. It was, it was horrific. It was horrible. So yeah. So, but so that there's, there's one of the reasons I just, and I just think the song is complete trash from a music standpoint, but now I'm, I'm demonstrating my music not being a music snob. So, but typically I don't hate a song. Maybe it's just because of that experience. But sadly, that, see, now when that's sung in a church, I don't know what to tell you. I, I don't, I, I, that, I, I always hate when someone tells me something happened in their church. I always say because I feel like I'm going to say something bad. But uh, I, I, oh, that just feels like total blasphemy. I just felt like, what is going on? I, I find it interesting if if a, if a church like Rick Warren or or one of these big mega churches, let's say I, I don't I don't you've probably seen video where uh, I can't remember one church they I think it was for their Easter service or whatever they started off I think with Highway to Hell by ACDC or Hell's Bells by ACDC uh, they started off with some like you know secular song uh, there's been churches that use songs by the Beatles ACDC whatever and and whenever those videos go they go viral and all the conservative Christians are like oh, horrible how dare they do that in the church that's so ungodly that is blasphemous I would never tolerate it and then on Fourth of July comes along. And then boom, we're singing all these patriotic songs. Now I'm, I'm, I know some say, well, it's not the same thing. I'm saying, well, where do you draw the line? What can you bring into the church that's acceptable? And what can you not? It can't just be based off your musical taste. Well, I don't like secular music. Well, if it's secular music, but it's about the country, that's okay. I, I, I don't know. I just, I just think we play such loose games with it. I, I'm interested if Will is still listening. Oh, I just gave his name. Sorry. Okay, I don't. Not the will who lives in a certain state, in in the South. Okay, uh, I'm talking about a will who lives in and uh, he's he's in Russia. Okay, he's in Russia, and for some reason, oh, they sung uh, "Proud to Be an American" in in a church in Russia. Okay, he's in a different. Okay, sorry, I gave your name. Okay, to the individual who's still listening, you can't correct it when you mess up live. Okay. To the individual who's listening. I'm I'm just interested to know, do you think that tomorrow in your unnamed church in an unnamed state, do you think it's going to be full-blown patriotism? Are they going to decorate the, the sanctuary and all kinds of patriotic, you know, flags and stuff? Do you think, uh, do you, uh, for your Sunday night service, is it going to be canceled so that people can go celebrate the country and fireworks and and all of that, what, how do you, how, how is it going to, how do you think it's going to play out in your church? Or do you already know? Do you already, I'm just curious if he answers this because it'll, it'll be, I mean, I know it's not a scientific, it's not a scientific survey. Um, all right. So they're, they're okay. I'm just curious to know what they're going to do. Okay. And he, and he's very patriotic. So it's going to be very, so there's a, probably a good sign that it's going to be a very patriotic service. And I know people think it's fat. I know people think it's crazy that I was in the military and that I'm not quote unquote patriotic. I, 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 I know people that bothers people. Look, I wore the uniform. I served my country. But I always understood that my allegiance was never to that. It was it was to Christ. It was to Him. Uh, so they're going to be patriotic hymns. And uh, we'll find out if they, what they're going to do Sunday night. We'll find out what they're going to be uh, do Sunday night. Um, yeah, that. So I, I was in the military, and I yes, I I mean I served the country. I, I wore the uniform. I, I I I just I just always kept it. I understood that the church. That's not what the church is about. The church is not to to promote country. The, the church is there to promote Christ. The church, the church is to tell us, obviously, 
respect submission to our governmental uh, authorities, even when they're not very good, like they're a, a Nero. I mean, that's what, what Paul was referring to there. So um, it'll be interesting. Um, so I, I know, I think a lot of people just confuse it. So because in, in my church, I'm not patriotic because that's not, that's not what the church is about. It's not what the church is about. You say, well, what, what do you think you can preach in regards to this? I, well, I, I put it this way. I'm going to be very careful not ripping verses out of the old, uh, the old Testament that are about Israel, making them about America. I can guarantee you that's one thing that I'm not going to do. Okay. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to take promises that were for Israel and somehow make them about America. That's one thing I'm not going to do. So, you know, what would be, uh, what's your message to America? Well, my, my, I don't have a message to the country. I have a message to the individuals who live in a country. And this is the message to all individuals in every country. You're a sinner. There is a God. He is holy. You need to repent, put your faith in Jesus Christ. And by placing your faith in Jesus Christ, your sins will be forgiven. His perfect righteousness will be imputed to you. And you will stand before God, holy and righteous because of an imputed righteousness. And then you will follow, you need to follow him and you need to grow in your faith. That's what my message is. Uh, you can, you can get up there and talk about how people, you know, our country's under attack and we've got to save our country. There's no saving your country. I guess you can try to fight it from a political standpoint, but win the political battle. If people aren't saved, they die and go to hell and, and you can't force Christianity upon an unregenerate heart. So even many of the patriotic sermons are just so broken from a theological standpoint. In fact, sometimes men who are very sound, theologically, and maybe even very good at handling the scripture, sometimes when patriotism gets mixed with it, hermeneutics get taken out back and shot, and they end up producing some kind of horrible, mutated monster of a sermon, and you're like, what was that? And you just have to just cry, and you have to weep because it's so bad. So, yeah, so... um so I, I, I'm assuming, and I, I didn't get an answer here, um, so I don't know if, if their, their church is going to cancel their uh, evening service or not. Um, may it, hang on, let me look here. Sometimes after enough messages on the uh, chat, let me turn this down. I'm going to look at something really quick. Sometimes it uh, doesn't show all of the chat. Okay, so oh, here we go. Yeah, it's it's not it's not showing up on the screen, so I had to pull it up on my iPad. Uh, so here we go. Uh, uh, there are fireworks Sunday night in town, so no night service. And he's going to remind everyone that we are supposedly a Christian nation, and evening services are canceled. All right, thank thank you thank you for telling me that. It's not showing up on my screen. That's why um, I had to look up on the iPad. It's weird how it does that. Yeah, there's no bar to pull it down. Hang on. Yeah, I. It's weird on the computer after after I guess uh, eight or seven messages, it it stops showing me new messages. So I'm not, and I don't want to mess with it because I'll knock myself live off the air. So um, thank you. So that now that's one church. That's one church. We didn't prove anything. I guarantee you, uh, the churches I drive uh, past on Sunday when I drive home Sunday evening. Uh, and, 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 and to be fair, I don't even know, I don't know, we've got so many people out, I don't even know if we're going to be able to have a Sunday evening service. I'm worried about Sunday morning, we've got so many people gone. But I know this, whatever, I'm going to be here Sunday, and I'm going to make sure I stick around to be here Sunday evening to do something, uh, because uh, yeah, yeah, but if everything, I'm going to do everything in my power to, to have a service. If we don't have a service, it's not going to be because um, of Fourth of July, it's going to be because half of my church is gone, um, more than half. 90%. <laughs> I don't even know. 100%. I, I may be the only one left. I, I may be here by myself, but I, I will turn on this microphone and do whatever I can because it's just so, uh, ah, it's sad. It's sad. So I, I don't know what I, I don't even really know what I wanted to accomplish other than I just feel, I feel so it's so, I didn't even realize it. I guess this is, I didn't even realize it, I, that it was 4th of July weekend. And the other day, I, I can't, I, I think I said in a live broadcast, I was like, I, I just figured out it was 4th of July weekend. And then all of a sudden, I think today, I'm like, wait a minute. If today's this, 4th of July is going to be on a Sunday. Oh man, I don't even know how many people are going to be gone. Half of my church. So then I started thinking about that. And then I'm like, oh no. 
It's on a Sunday. Oh, it's going to be full-blown, complete patriot patriotism taking over the church, political hijacking, patriotic hijacking, idolatry, some blasphemous mess of who knows what. And I, I hate, I, I guess, I guess I, when I was younger, I would just come, you know, full with guns blazing and just condemn it all day long. And I still want to condemn it, but I, I guess now I have more, I guess I'm more sensitive to the fact that there are some people in places that what else are they supposed to do? That's, that's their church. They don't have anything else. I feel bad for people in those kinds of churches. I do. Maybe they don't feel bad for themselves. They may be like, no, I love it. I, I think some people don't like the fact that I'm so anti-patriotism and so, you know, far the other extreme, but I I, I, I want to protect the church. I mean, again, it, you know, I, I, I just, I have a hard time imagining Christ looking at the church and, and you know, I know I'm obviously omniscient. I understand his deity. I understand that, but I'm just saying it's almost like it's got to be something foreign and alien. It's got to be like, it reminds me at least a little bit of Israel and what they would do with their religion, you know, sacrificing in the high places and so mixing the religion with idolatry, you know, building the golden calf. Have we, do we build a golden calf of patriotism? And of course you can't, you know, you don't want to knock over anyone's golden calf because they get mad. I just think patriotism has become an idol, an idol. I think there's idolatry running rampant in the church with politics and patriotism. I, I really do. I look, look, churches are, are so, conservative churches don't tolerate when liberal churches mix stuff with Christianity, right? If they, if they are going to focus on a Sunday about, you know, ra- racial justice Sunday, we're going to talk about, you know, issues that would be important to say Black Lives Matter. Many, many conservative churches are like, no, that is no, that, the church is not about social justice and being woke and no, no, it's not about that. But then they'll turn around and then have some, you know, rah, 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 America, red, white, and blue. And in many cases offer up questionable, even questionable historical accuracy about their claims of America, about America and its Christian connection. Sometimes some even very questionable historical statements. And so they, sometimes they say things that are fraudulent, false. And are they not just mixing something into the church that, it, that it, yeah, it may not be like those liberal churches, but isn't it just a, a, the opposite of the liberal churches, but on the other side, is it not this? I just, I just, how come, I, I know it's always easy to see everyone else's problems, but we have to see our own. And I just think that there is a problem. So I just think, thanks for anyone who's listening that I just try to process this in my own mind. I wish I had an, I wish I knew what to do, but you know, anytime you try to talk to people who are very patriotic and you, they just think that you hate America. I mean, all, all I ever get accused of, you hate America. You don't love your country. You wouldn't do anything for your country. You've done, you're, you're just one of those people who sit in the country and reap all the benefits and never done anything for the country. And I, I'm like, oh my goodness, please don't say that. Okay. You know, because, because it's just so not accurate for my experience in the military and everything that happened to me. It's not, it's not fair to say that. Um, it just they just misunderstand that I just think I'm inside a church. Now when I when I drive back to Abilene, Texas, and I pull down, I pull into Skyline Estates and I go down to 1802 Moonlight Drive. Now I didn't put it there, but there's an American flag on a flagpole in my yard. Okay. I have no problem with it being there. No problem with it being there. Okay. It's not a big issue to me, but it's not going to be in my church. I, I don't know how people can, can just see that there, th- th- there's a difference there, right? Okay, it's it's six twenty two p.m. Central Time, right? Now I'm gonna you know, probably people are gonna accuse me of being worldly, but I'm going to go home and at seven p.m. If, if I get there in time, I'm gonna turn on my television and I'm gonna watch some professional wrestling, right? I like the storytelling. I like the story. You know what? I love it. Don't think there's anything enjoying it as long as I do it in proper in the proper way and I make sure that my focus is on loving and delighting in the things of God. So I got to do it the correct way and not make it an idol. But guess what? I'm never bringing it into the church. 
I love America, but the church is not here to promote America. I'm grateful for what God has done for America, but God is working in the nations. He's going to do his sovereign will in those nations. I'm thankful. Yes, I can pray for my country. Yes, on 4th of July, you can pray for all your political leaders. I wonder how many of these super conservatives, pray for, for President Biden. That's, that's scriptural. There's no problem with doing that. Hey, on the 4th of July, I got no problem dedicating the 4th of July, maybe the day before, a day of prayer and fasting for the country and all of its leaders, liberal and conservative, Democrat and Republican. I got no problem doing that, praying for our, 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 our elected leaders, reading scripture about how we are to give prayer to those elected leaders. I got no problem reminding us that as Christians, our citizenship is first and foremost in heaven. However, we are to be submissive and respectful to the earthly leaders. Romans 13, I know not a very popular chapter anymore. I think it's kind of been removed from Bibles now, but okay. Um, I got no, there, there, there are some, there are some lessons that can be taught in regards to it. It's just how we do so and doing it in a correct and God honoring way where we're not committing some form of idolatry. Look, the human heart, you've all heard this before, is an idol factory, right? I didn't come up with that. That's been a, a saying, I think it's sometime attributed to Calvin, that the human heart is basically an, a, a factory for idols. We can make an idol of anything. We can make an idol out of our family, and we believe family is good. We can make an idol out of our country. And yes, I'm glad that I live in America where I can turn on this microphone and I can walk into this church Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I can post these things all over the internet. I am so grateful for that freedom. Yes, I am. But I cannot make an idol out of it. I cannot allow it to become something that destroys my Christianity that corrupts my Christianity. So I just, I just, I'm pleading with you to really, really think about what happens tomorrow um, or Sunday for think, I'm thinking it's Saturday all of a sudden, whatever happens in your church. And again, just have a, be respectful. And, and, and I hope and pray that it's not horrible. I hope and pray that it's God glorifying to the best. And, and hopefully you can be spiritually fed from it and that something good will come out of it. Uh, and hopefully the scriptures will be handled in a God glorifying way. And then I, I just know that, and if you need something else, I'll be here doing whatever I'm going to be doing Sunday. It's not going to be patriotic messages. I can tell you that it's going to be, uh, you know, like I said, Niagara Creed, Romans eight, and then whatever we do Sunday afternoon, uh, that's what we're going to do. It's going to Bible study exercise, Psalm 37, uh, The Imitation of Christ by Thomas Akempis. I still need to figure out what in the world to do with the chapter that I'm in in uh, The Christian in Complete Armor. You know, maybe we'll get to Genesis 15. Uh, 15,000 other things to look at and study. I, I, want, I want to look at the, the, the leaven of the Pharisees, Sadducees, and the Herodians. I, I've got kind of an idea that I'm working on. There's so many things I've got that I'm working on, that um, I've got plenty to do other than turning the church into some pro-American propaganda machine trying to get people to be patriotic. That's not my job. That's not, that's not the ch job of the church, and there's no place. Look, there's, it's impossible for you to, pr to argue with me that the Bible calls for that. It does not call for that. Nowhere, no how. It doesn't. Calls for preaching and proclaiming God's word. So just, I guess, pray for your church. I'll, I'll pray for the church of the listener here. I'll pray for his church and hope that it goes as well as it can be. I'm sad, sad that the church service got canceled for fireworks. It's just, I mean, I, just, I don't even know how you wrap your mind around that. Hey, God's word, God's pre the word preaching of God's word will be canceled tonight so that you can all go enjoy the fireworks and everybody will say, amen. It's like, really, really? I guess that goes back to the Bible study exercise I just did in Psalm 37. What do you truly delight yourself in? Do you truly delight in the things of God or do you delight in all the fun of a holiday weekend? And I love a holiday weekend. I love, uh, holidays are great. Holidays are great. And I want you to enjoy family and friends and food and have a great time. 
just our, our, our priority has to be God. So I'll stop right there. I know it's kind of like nothing. I know nothing. It's just me sharing. That's all this is. I, I wish I had something more. I feel bad now. I feel bad that people are listening. I, I guess in my mind, I was just going to turn on the microphone and really talk this out with myself. Uh, but you're listening. And I I, uh, I wish I had something really profound to say, but I, it's just more of frustration that I've, I've, I've spent my whole Christian life watching this stuff happen over and over and over and over and over and over. And it's just like, no, it, not only does it not change, in some ways, I think because of how politically hijacked the church has become, maybe this 4th of July, and because the Democrats are in uh, holding, you know, charge in, in, in the, the, the different branches of government, that it may even be more over the top patriotic and pro America and pro conservative kind of mentality. And, you know, they're destroy the Marxists are destroying our country and the liberals are destroying our country and critical race theory is going to brainwash all of us. And we've got to do something. And it, it may turn in more into that than at any time in, in recent years. Maybe, I, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see how many people contact me going, you're not going to believe what my church did. You're not going to believe me what my church did. You're not going to believe what my church did. And sadly, I probably can believe it and will probably just want to weep when I see it and hear about it. But everyone have a great evening, great night. All we can ask is, is, I know right now a lot of people are going to say, you know, pray for um, uh, God to bless America. And, you know, how about just focus on praying for God to purify, strengthen the church and that the church would get back to doing what the church needs to do. It, that That's the most important thing. That's the most important thing. All right, everyone have a great night. Thanks for uh, listening. Uh, thanks for the comments. I always appreciate that. And uh, yeah. You just, I wish I had something profound to say. Just go with God. Amen.